we got a rough um, plan of our mast. It's got to be 13 foot 4 overall so that it slots inside the boat when it's stowed away. Two and three quarter inch diameter where it goes through the forward port. Tapering to two inches at the top. We, I tend not to put a, a uniform taper on it because the mast always looks thin in the middle end like a Roman column. So I always get the half width above halfway so that it actually tapers in. It just makes it look that little bit better. We've got our piece of spruce. I've run it through the thickness of, to make it two and three quarter inches square, um, but it's not perfectly straight. So we've got a bit of planing to do off the edges to straighten it up. Marked it out roughly. That's the bottom of the mast. This is where it goes through the seat. This gets tapered down to a square to fit into the mast step, but we'll worry about that later. Then just coming up, we've got the various widths we want marked on there. Two and three eighths there, coming down to two at the top. I've got a little mast ring to sit on top to take the shrouds and that's inch and three quarter diameter internal so we'll just put a little shoulder on there and reduce the diameter of the mask with the top inch, inch, inch and a half. A piece of aluminium sail track is quite handy because it's, it's reasonably straight but you can give it a little a little bend over a few feet so I tend to use that for marking out so uh, we've done that on marked out on this face so all we need to do now is to plane that side and that side down to our lines then we'll have it, it tapering in one direction but it'll still be two and three quarter inches across there so we'll have to turn it 90 degrees mark out that side and plane that off That's one side down to the line.
So that's got the taper that way. That's looking fairly straight. What we need to do now is cut a similar taper, mark out a similar taper on here. Now what I tend to do, whether it's right or wrong, no one's ever told me anything different really, is to keep the back edge of the mouse straight. Because if you in this pulling up a gaff it doesn't really matter too much but if you've got a sail track or whatever on the back of the mast it's good for that to be straight rather than every side of the mast tapering in to the top it just seems to make sense to keep the back straight and take the taper off the front um, it makes no difference to the dimension of the mast the stiffness of the mast really So we just look down and select the, the best side. Which I think is probably that one. So we'll keep this one straight and this will become the back of our mast. And then we can just transfer the widths that we marked on here onto this face, keeping that flat. So we'll mark all our taper on this edge and then we can plane that away and we end up with a tapered square of mast. Two and a half down here. Another little tip which is pretty obvious but using the end of the rule always leads to errors. It's always better to measure from one inch or from two inches, especially when you're dealing with small small sized measurements you get far more accuracy because here we've got the end of the the rule wobbling about supposedly to allow for the thickness of your hook but uh, they're not always that accurate two and five eighths there and this lower section so it goes through the seat, it's two and three quarters, which is what it is, which is good news. This is the tapered square section. Get our piece of sail track, a couple of clamps can be handy.
pick up the pencil lines as best we can. Bearing in mind it's not a straight line because we've left the taper a bit wider in the lower sections. Line. It looks a little hollow there, perhaps. So you might just leave it slightly full there. It's not the end of the world. We can sort of do what we like, really. But uh, so now we just flick it over and set the plane a going again. It's not bad, a little shaving off there. 